Now, he and Dan Nickel had a competition the last time. He has Leopard Creek. And Silver Nathan told me, I've got to get this guy. He's the funniest guy on earth. And we were listening to him. And you were speaking English. Yeah. <laughs> Any case, you're welcome back at Leopard Creek. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> President Becky, our host from Times Media, uh, and I'm going to stop for all protocol observed because they, if I mention somebody, he's going to be captured tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it is actually a very great honor, and uh, I want to thank You know, the first time I was here was in 1988. Tasius Maybach was still alive. And a lot of similarities with those days. The government who thought, uh, uh, a party that thought it was the government, that thought it was the state, and uh, acted with no regard for rule of law. Uh, if you were against Apartheid, you were deemed a communist, which is kind of hilarious if you think about that. And few of us were threatened. Uh, Magnus Milan, Michael Katz is here. He remembers that in front of Gavin Reilly, my, uh, Magnus told me politics the cutthroat business, and I mean that literally. <laughs> and, and I hadn't had any idea that there were kid squads. And Gavin explained it very nicely to me. And I went home that night. And my wife gave me the best advice. She said, tell everybody. Because if you tell everybody, they dare not do it. So that was in 88. Now we're 28 years later. We're grappling with the same issues where the party, unfortunately, has turned into the government of the day, and they think that they'll never leave. We've heard till Jesus come in these comments. And the next thing is, there's a confusion between the role of government and what is the state. Now this has been throughout South America, throughout Africa. Our problem is governance, it's not people. If you look at North and South Korea, or East and West Germany, if you go back to the uh, 1880s, the standard of living was the same all over the world. It didn't matter whether you lived in Cape Town or Rio or Buenos Aires or Mexico City or London or Paris. It was basically the same quality of life. But then some societies made certain choices about how they would govern themselves. And you can look, but the successful countries chose the rule of law, separation of church and state, if you wish, freedom of speech, guaranteed freedom of speech, private property ownership, free transferable um, currencies. So certain countries chose some ways and others didn't, and the divergence started. Now, I was joking about the state capture a little bit, or about the capturing. I was saying to President Becky, I'd love to have a monopoly. I just haven't been able to create any monopoly in my life. We always, we always say in our group, don't play cat and mouse games if you're the mouse. <laughs> That's the advice. I've been the mouse. Philip Morris was 20 times, 50 times our size. In every business we're involved with the small guys. And when you invest back in South Africa and you're successful, and people ask you to invest, Eric Malobi asked me to come with him to Kahiso. The two twin communist trade unionists, Johnny Copeland and Marcel, asked us to invest in ETV because we needed a free from political interference, and I thought the trade unionists would do it. So we backed them. I've never been to ETV in my life. 
Now, a very close friend of ours who's not here, Gigi Ferrara's mom years ago, said to us, you're not only known by your friends, you're also known by your enemies. And I'm very proud to share the same enemies with the public prosecutor that's just left. I've only met her once. And that was when we conferred a degree on her at Stellenbosch University. It's the only time I've ever spoken to her. I've only, to, before tonight, met with Minister Gordon twice. Same as with the President. Only twice. The difference, uh, you know, I thought about saying that the only difference is Minister Gordon didn't ask for money, but then I decided I was not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to ask yourself, why are they doing this? Why are they creating these false stories? We have created wealth and by the way, Mr. President, for all of you civil servants here, you and Minister Gordon who says we've got to be caring, don't make too much money, I've got news for you. The PIC owns two and a half times the number of shares in both Richmond and in Remgro that our family owns. Now that's your pension fund. You may wish to reconsider the caring bit. Our job is to create wealth, to pay people properly, which we've done all of our lives. Because creating wealth and creating jobs create further jobs. We pay tax. We brought back tens of billions of rent in foreign exchange and every year our family companies bring back more dividends than the rest of the stock exchange together. So you do not expect these narratives, and especially not out of the presidency and his close friends. So the real question is why? That you'll all have to think about yourselves. What is being hidden? Why attack people instead of debating the issue? Our issues are unemployment and a terrible educational system. It is a disaster. Unless we fix that, we have no hope. And yes, Minister Gordon, I started in 1979, the Small Business Development Corporation, we created 700,000 jobs. And this was done for black people living in cities who did not have the ways and means to build up capital. So I've been in small business. We've done it over, what's it, 1979. Been there, done that and we'll help again. But we really need to define the roles between business and the government and the state. Because governments cannot create jobs. The state cannot. Otherwise there'd be no unemployment anywhere in the world. It's the private sector that's got to create the jobs. And all we need is certainty, rule of law, transparency. When they're tenders, they must be public tenders. It must be transparent. I've personally never done business with the state, really because I don't trust the state. So I don't know whom I could have captured. I have one Final thanks, apart from my wife and children, all my colleagues. I have to thank Mr. Julius Malema. Because if it hadn't been for his narratives, I was in danger of becoming totally irrelevant. <laughs> I mean, you guys have forgotten about us. 
first guy down who lived in Stellenbosch, I don't know, I can be part of the Stellenbosch Mafia, who will live in Somerset West. <laughs> and I haven't been given an award for so long until Mr. Malema arrived. And he pointed out to me that I was running the ANC, the DA, the uh, SARS, by the way, like the old SARS. Uh, they only get in trouble, especially recently, by the way. Um, the kind of, uh, you want to talk against us? Uh, oh, um, and I forgot the central bank, they were in as well. And now, of course, people have left him, and they now say, I'm controlling Julius. I've never met him. <laughs> but I did send him a text message through a friend that if he doesn't stop lying about me, I'm going to tell the world that I actually do give him money. <laughs> All I have to do is to put the little text out and then make it look like it was an accidental direct message that... <laughs> and lie. All I have to say is, I've met you, I like you, and I'm actually backing you. So stop lying about me, and I won't lie about our relationship. I've never <laughs> met you, but I promise you, two can play the game. You have to, finally, a journalist, Lionel Barber of the FT. Nobody has spoken about the election in the United States at this moment. But Lionel had, a, you know, this lunch with the FT. And he had Jim Baker, Secretary of State, you know, remember Reagan and Bush years. 86, 87 years old, wise and extremely funny man. And he asked him, are you worried about which candidate is going to win? And Mr. Baker said, no, not really. He said, really? He said, no. Either candidate, if they don't already know it, will soon find out when they become president that their power is limited by the Constitution, it's limited by Congress, it's limited by bureaucracy, something we forget about. So we have checks and balances in the system, and quite frankly, I'm not particularly worried. How I wish we could say that in our country, and I really hope everybody here will continue to back those individuals that are upholding the Constitution. Thank you very much.